to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And why is Curtis Martin here? Because he left the dark side, the Patriots, and he came to the lovely home of the New York Jets, future Hall of Famer, will go in as a Jet, I hope. Uh, Curtis Martin is here for good luck. I am schlepping to Foxborough next, uh, tomorrow. 24 hours from now, Mott, I will be getting nervous. A little vomit building up. A little worrisome, but I'm excited. Huge game, looking forward to it. And what I'm looking forward to right now is tasting these four wines today. We're gonna bump it up another wine, just one more wine, because I'm enjoying this mixed bag of tricks, Mr. Mott. But first, let's link it up. We sold 400 Thanksgiving packs already. I am invading plenty of the homes here from the Vaniacs. We're getting low on some of the, one of the wines, and that's the problem with the Thanksgiving pack, because you gotta stick to the wine. So, if you're gonna wanna be a part of it, you're gonna have to act fast. Mott, link it up. Let's do it. It's getting exciting. Um, also, Thunder Cruise. Mott, link up the Thunder Cruise. If you don't know what's going on with our Thunder Cruise, cabins are actually selling pretty well. All of a sudden, I think people are not worried about the economy. They wanna go. We've added a lot of data. Uh, some of the wines are gonna be on the cruise, so check that out, Mott. Link that up. Have uh, some people, if you have any questions, feel free to email me on that. Um, and I'm excited about this show. We're starting off with a sparkling wine, a cava. Uh, I speak quite a bit of the cava sparkling wines from Spain. Uh, this is the Juve and Champs uh, Camps uh, Brut Rosé made from 100% Pinot Noir. It is 30 US dollars, 90 points J. Miller. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Rosé, rosé sparkling wine for 15 bones, excuse me, for 13 bones. And this is why cava has really positioned itself, in my opinion, even more so than Prosecco, because these wines tend to be more serious, in not more serious, but more um, champagne-like than Prosecco, which has a little higher residual sugar, have positioned themselves as some of the most exciting sparkling wines in the world. Now, a little fun fact, I rarely say it on the Thunder Show, at the end of the day, dessert, dessert, it's so funny how things match, Desert Island, or Desert Island, Desert Island, Last kind of wine, I'm thinking about sparkling. I love champagne, I love sparkling wine, and I'm awfully excited about trying the Juve and Camp's Brut Rosé. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Nice raspberry juice, wow. Smell them up, just like loaded with raspberry juice. I also get very uh, nice, subtle, like, um, like, you know, remember those cough drops that you love, Lindem Liedemann's or whatever, you know, the cough drops, like the red cough drops that were like candy? Because mm -hmm. you'd always like, like, I'd be like, Mom, I have a sore throat, give me that, you know, kind of thing. Uh, getting a bit, a little bit of that coming through. A little yeastiness, a little bread, you know, always get that. Really pretty. Let's give it a whirl. Loud today. Great acidity, nice uh, mid palate. I get a grainy component, actually, a barley grainy component on the mid palate. And then it scores on the finish with a really good raspberry, good acidity, nice bubble count in the mouth. Nice. Really solid stuff. Um, Little hollow on the mid palate, even though there's that graininess. Finishes pretty well. A nice sparkling rose. I think Jay Miller got a little too excited. Um, but I'm gonna go 87, 88 points. I'm gonna go 88 points in this. If you're looking for Pinot Noir, um, rose, you know, sparkling wine, I think this wine hits a certain tone. It reminds me of Brut Rosés from Champagne. It um, comes a little short but really well made. There's a little floral action that I didn't really talk a whole lot about that's coming through on the finish. Solid stuff, I just don't want to give it 90 points because it doesn't have the pizzazz of a 90 pointer to me, but 88 points for a $13 sparkling wine from any part of the world is really worthwhile. And to compare this to Chandon or Corbel or all the other baloney that a lot of people drink at the sparkling wine price point between eight and $15, this crushes a lot of them, and I think it's a very nice start, a good little thing, and you know, if, as a wine buyer, I would pour this by the glass. This is the typical New York City wine program, serious wine program, by the glass 
champagne that everybody should be pouring at restaurants throughout New York City. I think it's very solid and um, I like it. Came a little short on the hollow mid palate um, and if it had that, this would be a runaway smash hit. Let's move on. Jardin, 2005 Cabernet Sauvignon from South Africa. Produced and bottled by Gary and Kathy Jordan. 2005 cab, 16 US dollars, 90 points wine enthusiast. Kathy and Gary are um, the first husband and wife winemaking team in South Africa. Gary studied in uh, UC Berkeley, I think, so California action. 10 to 18 year old vines. Um, this wine spent 21 months in new and used French oak, 16 bones, very good price point for Cabernet. And Andre, one of the Vaniacs in the forum, picked the 2004 as like the wine that everybody in the forum would drink, wine of the month, they were doing that in the forum for a while. Um, and I think that uh, it was a big hit, a lot of people were buying it here last year, so I saw the 05 come in. It didn't score the 93 or 94 points it did last year from the wine enthusiast, so it's scored a little bit lower, but, I'm very fascinated about what's going on in Stellenbosch uh, with the um, Cabernet grape. I think it's got a chance, a sneaky chance, to become a factor in the Cabernet game. A lot of people yearning, yearning for that $12 to $18 Cabernet that just brings it. And California prices have escalated. Napa's tough to get those kind of price points. It's getting harder to find Cabernet. That's why so many of the 05, 06 little Bordeaux's have been a lot of fun to find that Cabernet at that $15 price range. So I'm really hoping, kind of for you guys, and for myself, for that matter, that we find this Cabernet. And this is a $16 price point. I love what's going on in South Africa in general. I want people to recognize that there's more than just Pinotage and Chenin Blanc. Let's see what the Cabernet grape does. Gorgeous color. I mean, I'm just like sitting here looking at it. Just beautiful. Beautiful color. Let's give it a snippy snip. Wow, a lot more vegetal than I thought. Let me just get back in here. Completely caught me off guard. Wow, this is almost like on the nose. If I smelled it in a blind tasting, I would start saying, okay, this is Cabernet Franc. So it's extremely vegetal. I get basil for days. I get some really obvious celery stick. And like I dipped it in my Bloody Mary because I'm getting a little tomato action as well. Little black pepper coming through but green, cabbage, celery, um, lettuce, uh, cucumbers, just like a salad in my nose. Smell this mop. Loaded with bell pepper and dill. Those are really the two dominant. Um, wild, right? Very vegetal. That does not smell like a cab. You don't like the vegetal stuff usually, no. right? So very vegetal. That's leaning towards my palate a little more, so I'm excited about this, but I'm keeping the percentage of, God, the percentages in mind. Um, a lot of people would be turned off by this smell. Let's give it a whirl. Very green, wow. Re wow, really green on the mouth. I mean, the green hornet and the green arrow and the incredible Hulk, all in my mouth right now, and the jets. And, um, and several other things. Um, very green on the mouth. I mean, that, that's what comes to mind, green. Um, just loaded with English peas, snap peas, celery stick, extremely vegetal. A huge turn off to a lot of people. I get a lot of leather on this wine and clearly some loose leaf tobacco. Not cigarette, loose leaf tobacco coming through on the mouth. Let's give it a whirl a little more. So green, but it gets you in the back here. Eucalyptus, mint components, fascinating wine. Thought provoking, really. I would be, sh wow, this is really, really green. Mott, very minty eucalyptus -y on the back end palette. Reminds me in that level a little bit of like the old heights, but this is even more, on top of the eucalyptus and the, uh, and the mint, you're getting vegetables, whereas with the heights, you get blackberries and black currant, and there's a balance there. This is just green. Um, not for Mott. And see, that's what I keep fighting with with this wine. To me, wine enthusiasts is in the game. I'm gonna go 89 points. And don't forget, that means, you know, that's up my, this is up my alley. This is the kind of stuff I like to drink. Um, to me, it's um, so intense. It's very difficult, I think, to match this with food. It's that intense. Um, I do see other people really um, getting turned off by the greenness. Um, I can see a lot of people 
being down on this wine and reading it in their mind in the 70s. Um, to me though, it's very fascinating and most importantly, if you're really trying to figure out what I mean by vegetables and green and eucalyptus and mint, this is a must have wine to build your palate, to expand your flavor profile. Though you might want to do it with a big wine tasting where eight or 10 of you can share it. Because again, by percentages, this is not the type of wine that America is drinking heavily right now. Um, I like it, I think it's intriguing, it's really up my alley. Though I think that 80% of you who are watching this would be appalled by this effort. Mott's face was a good indicator and he is still unhappy. Um, but a, a solid wine, a wine that I think will last for two to four years. Um, I don't even know what kind of food I would pair this with. Believe it or not, the thing that I'm yearning for with this is mashed potatoes. I don't know why. I think that would be the interesting pairing for me. One more time on the snippy sniff in the palate. Wines have been open for about seven hours too. Taping late today. Um, uh, five hours, just FYI. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go 89 points, but boy, boy oh boy, SS Chris, you have some work to do. This is the kind of wine that a lot of people would have in their 70 point range. Controversial wine, I always like a little controversy. If you try this wine or stumble upon it, email me at Gary at winelibrary.com in the history of time. Aliens, if you're watching this, Still email me, I'm probably dead, but it's okay. Email me, I'm curious. Let's move on. That's the thing, Mott, these videos last forever, you know. I mean, Immortalized. it's pretty wild. I'll get emails for like the rest of my life. I'll be like 70 and like, you know, running the jets and somebody's gonna say, that's your end cab, you were wrong. Oh, sorry. All right, let's move on. Excited about this? Oh, weird wine. Even too green for me and that almost never happens. Um, this is the uh, Val Mayo. Uh, 2006, Mi Miandro. Uh, this is a red wine from Doro, uh, a region in Spain, excuse me, in Portugal that's been really catching my attention. 40% Triga Nacional, a grape that we've talked a lot about in Portugal. Uh, Tinta Roriz, Toriga Franca, so 30% Tinta uh, Roriz, 20% uh, Toriga Franca, 5% uh, Tinta Baraco, and 5% Tinta Amarilla, and these are grapes that you commonly see in uh, port um, that have been made in still wine. Uh, big fat in the last five to seven years in Portugal. You know what I think about Portuguese wines. They've definitely gotten a good play here on the Thunder Show. Uh, 92 points, Wine Spectator, 22 US dollars. Big up to Ty Law, former Jet, now a Jet again, former Patriot, now with the Jets, wearing number 22 now. Matt, you like that little fun fact? Very current. Let's give this a snippy snip. Man, the arom what a fun show. I mean, just two very distinct, aromatically intriguing white, wi uh, white wines, red wines. This wine loaded with Slim Jim. So I get beef jerky spiciness. I get a lot of black pepper. I'm just like shredded, fresh black pepper coming through. Beef jerky-esque on the on the nose, really smells like you took some cranberry juice, ocean spray, and poured it on a crap load of beef jerky, mashed it together and just smelled it. That's what this smells like to me. Really heavy on the cranberry, very heavy on the beef jerky. Do you get that spicy beef jerky thing going on? I smelled on? the pepper, I didn't get the beef jerky. Very meaty, very intriguing. Got a leather, venison, raw meat, like you know, just you ripped the heart out of a panda bear. <laughs> no, that was bad, that was so raw. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're like a, a grizzly bear that wanted to hurt your family, I'm sorry. Uh, um, sometimes the mind just goes. Um, really interesting, tasted a lot of wine today. I had to taste a lot of wine for the store. The pepper and the beef jerky is very, very obvious. Very interesting, let's give this a whirl. Real deal. Wow, big wine, an invasion of rose petals coming through. Getting a lot of floral wines lately, seeing it more and more. Um, really nice black cassis coming through, very focused fruit, great mid palate. Transition is on point. Shredded dark chocolate on the mid palate, really firms up the tannins. This is a wine that will last for eight to 15 years easy. This is a wine that I would totally pair with hanger steak, you know, uh, ribeye, um, 
you know, I love my steaks Pittsburgh style. Burnt on the outside, raw on the inside. This is the kind of wine, this is the exact kind of wine that I wanna pair with my steak. Just a plain steak, no sauce, because the wine's the sauce. There's so much of that going on. I get a meaty barbecue kind of thing going on in the mouth. This is gorgeous, and it lasts forever. My, you still tasting? I mean, just the length of this wine completely coats my palate. I mean, it's like somebody spray painted in my body. That's how much it, just like layers and layers. Can't get it off. Kicking it off. Let me give it one more shot. This is good wine. Kudos to the wine spectator. I think they knocked it out of the park. I'm gonna follow up with them and go 92 points in this dark chocolate, massive, robust, focused Bordeaux meets Italy kind of wine is where I'm going imaginary on this with a little Rhone kick because of the pepperness. Um, very good, so intense and so fruit forward. Reminds me of a big fruit bomb, but doesn't have the viscosity or the over extraction that those wines have. This is the balance of new wines in my mind. This is the kind of wine, this is textbook in my mind of what I'm looking for. That's a step up from Bordeaux in flavor, but not overdone like so many of the Colt California Cab or Australian Shiraz wines are. This walks the tightrope and it walks late perfectly and elegantly with class. Great effort, tremendous job, and once again, I'm a little bit disappointed. I did a Portuguese tasting not too long ago, about three weeks ago, where I went like one for 17, and I remember thinking, crap, I, it would have been great to have it on the Thunder Show, because I think people think that I'm a little prejudiced towards Portuguese wines, because they do so well in the show, but this is killing. There's nothing I can say. Let's move on. I wanted to hate it, Mott. Dying to try this wine, Mott. Look at this package. Herman's Story, Nuts and Bolts, 2006. This is 100% Syrah, only 550 cases made, 91 points Robert Parker, 29 US dollars. Russell P is the winemaker and owner of this winery. These are some of the more interesting cult Syrah winery coming out of California right now in the Santa Barbara, um, getting fruit from some of the most famous vineyards, including White Hawk and Leticia, to name a few. And I also know, by doing a little bit of homework, that many of the original Baniacs are on this list and are part of the uh, his mailing list. Mott, let's link him up, hermanstorywines.com. Link that up um, if people want to get on the mailing list. Um, 29 US dollars. These are the kind of wines that I've been turned off with lately, so let me preface that. Just two over the top from California, especially from... Um, from Santa Barbara, they get big and explosive. That Cinquanon, oh high, over the top extraction. However, open mind, great color. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. First thing I notice, also a pepper driven nose, not the extracted over the top fruit punch fruit that I get from a lot of Syrahs. So right off the bat, I'm a little excited. This actually smells a little more like Hermitage to me than anything else. I get a little clove on the nose. Remember when I did the clove and I got, became numb on the Thunder Show? Um, you know, it's funny, I get a little beef jerky in this too. I don't want to back to back it, but you know, I gotta call a spade a spade. I get a little beef jerky on this. I'm not, I don't think I'm limited anymore, guys. I just am getting it again. Um, I also get a little hint of a, you know, kind of like an onion Bobby stew Jeffrey, kind Jeffrey, of thing. Bobby, Weird, five, very interesting, zero. blackberries. I'd be remiss to not mention big blackberries coming through. Really solid stuff. Let's give it a whirl. Big. Real big. Ooh. And 16.1% alcohol content. Big boy. Wow. Um, Totally coats my palate. Big massive fruit, tons of chocolate, tons of raspberries, tons of blackberries, plum, which I like quite a bit. A lot of plum in this wine. You get that too much? A lot of plum, which I like quite a bit. Um, definitely slightly over the top, but not in an obnoxious way, which I kind of appreciate. But boy, hot, hot on the finish. The alcohol is a little bit high for this wine. I think Parker went high with 91 points, but I know why, because he loves this bombastic style. And though this is a little bit more refined than some of the fruit bombs that I'm totally turned off by, it's still a tad big for me. 
I don't see myself really eating this, drinking this with a lot of food. This is kind of by itself. It's a dessert and a meal by itself. It's that big. And you know what? Kudos. Sometimes, after a tough Jets loss on a Thursday night to the Patriots, I want to drink a whole bottle of this to the head. 61 alcohol completely fills me up exactly where I want to go. But, in my overall wine drinking, this gets a little hair over the top for me. Less than I expected, based on the marketing of like the whole like Cinquenon look, and just where it's coming from, and the vineyards it's using, and the alcohol content. So I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that he's been able to kind of keep it somewhat under control. And I think in three or four years, this wine could open up nicely and become a little bit more food friendly and more drinkable. It's a big boy right now. I would highly recommend people not drinking it at this point. I think it needs to be put away. But if you do, big foods. But on the flip side, as I sip this a little bit, there's a lot of fun to possibly drinking this, watching the Knicks get a nice fat cheeseburger, bacon, uh, and drink this, just that fun hedonistic over the top kind of day. So, gotta know what it is. I'm gonna go 88 plus points on it. It's too over the top for my palate. But at 29 bones, there's a lot of people spending 60 bones to get this thrill. So kudos to the Herman Story people for that part of it. Solid stuff, doesn't crush me, too over the top. Definitely not as exciting as yesterday's shows where the wines really went. If I was buying for the store, clearly other people are buying because they're here. Um, if I was buying for the store, this would be a no-brainer and I would buy as much as I could. I would definitely place this wine and uh, I'd probably pass on the other two. Though, because this is a 91 point wine and small production and people want it, I'd probably bring it in. But for my palate, for my place, these two sh shine. I might have even been a little bit tough on this. I kind of sip this as I go away. Um, question of the day. <clears throat> What's your Jets Patriots prediction? I want it from all of you. Also, are you part of the Thanksgiving pack? Super excited about this one. Really excited what I did with this one. I really picked some wines that really go great with Thanksgiving dinner. So I know so many people did it last year with their families. Can't wait to be in your home for Thanksgiving. Love sparkling wine, guys. Good stuff. Yeah, it's a little hollow in the mid palate. I did a good job, at least for myself. That's all I got. I don't have much. Um, my big anniversary tomorrow. I love you, Elizabeth. Four years to 400 more, baby. I love you. And I turned 33 on Friday. That is a major problem. I will probably not be the same person when I come back on Monday. Um, Friday's show is epic, though. Mott, you been working on that? Is it, is it a good, good, good go? Wait till you see Friday's show. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.